Okay. Welcome to Biology Required Practical Activity 5. This is uh, doing looking at food tests where we are testing qualitatively testing different foods for things such as proteins, lipids, which are fats, and carbohydrates. Okay, so first test, this is the first test which is testing for starch. Uh, starch is found in things like bread, for example. Uh, it's a carbohydrate, um, and starch is actually stored carbohydrate. Um, so what we're going to use today is we're going to use this um, particular chemical called iodine. So iodine is a brown colorless liquid. I'll just show you on this here. So you can see it's brown and colorless. And here I've got a source of starch. If I place it in the test tube in front, and then just all I do is add three or four drops and we see what happens. So, so immediately you can see the starch has gone a blue black color in fact it's quite black black there so blue black and that shows there's a positive indication that starch is present just to show you that starch um, is in bread if I do the same here okay I can actually just pour um, some iodine onto the bread and you can see it immediately goes black so that shows that we have starch present in the bread and that is the starch test okay the next food test is for protein um, so as you can see I've got some chemicals in front of me I've got these two chemicals here called burette A which is called sodium hydroxide and I've got burette B which in this case is copper sulfate so what I'm going to do is test these two um, food stuff so I have milk and albumin. Albumin is basically um, a part of the egg that contains lots of protein. So you could test foods. If you have to test foods you have to filter uh, the food first but we're going to just add some milk. So I'm going to show you if there's any protein in the milk. So first of all take your test tube and add the milk. And then I am actually just going to place it here uh, so I can then use the droplets. So first of all, I'm going to use a couple of drops of burette A, first of all. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to add some copper sulfate burette B, if I can get it open. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. So equal amounts. Okay, and then I will take it out. I'm just going to shake it, okay? So I'm just going to just agitate it slightly, okay? And as you can see, it's gone a lilac or purple color, okay? Which is an indicator that protein is present. There we go. So that is the protein test. Okay, uh, this uh, next test is for lipids, which is a type of fat. So if we look, I have uh, some cheese here. Okay, so cheese tends to contain lo lots of lipids. I've also got some oil as well. I've put the oil into the test tube already. Okay, and what we're going to use is this substance here called Sedan 3. And Sedan 3 uh, is a chemical that you can add um, and, and I'll show you what happens. So what you need to do is you need to have your samples. You need, if you're going to use a sample like cheese, you need to use a pestle and mortar to um, grind it down and then you need to filter it. So if I take some Sedan 3, so I'm gonna just take a bit there, okay. And then I'm going to place it into this sample here first of all. So one, two, three. 
put that back in there and then I'm going to place a bung and I'm going to actually shake it again okay so just invert it slightly I'm going to leave that for a moment and I'm going to do the same in the test tube with the oil okay slightly more than three there okay and again I'm going to shake it okay right okay and then you would leave them uh, for a couple of minutes and then see if any any of the red sedan three is found on the top of the sample so just to save time, I've got one that I prepared earlier. Okay, so this is the one I prepared earlier. So this is with some oil and you can see that the Sedan 3 is basically resting on the top of the liquid and that shows that lipids are present. So that's kind of what it should look like. So that is the test for lipids. Okay, this is related to the work that you're doing on food tests. Um, if you have a piece of food, okay, such as this biscuit, then before you can sample it, you usually would have to uh, filter it. So to filter it, you first of all got to break down the uh, piece of food. So you literally, all you do is you break up the piece of food you're interested in, for example, this uh, biscuit, okay? You can then add some water, so if you can see that, and then you, you use the um, pestle and mortar to grind the sample. And you make it as small as you possibly can. Probably a bit more water in there so I can filter it. There we go. There we go. So once you've got your sample, you've got to use a piece of filter paper. Filter paper usually comes uh, like that. And to prepare the filter, you need to fold it in half and then fold it again. And then open up one of the sides like this. Okay, and there you've got your filter. And you just place it into the funnel. And then I'm going to uh, filter it into this test tube. I only need a small sample, but I'm going to place it all in like that okay and then hopefully you'll you will get a, a clear liquid coming through you'll know that you've done it correctly because the liquid should be clear at the bottom okay this test is for testing for sugars okay so you can either use a liquid or you can use a food stuff in this case we're using a biscuit that we filtered earlier um, and we're going to use this chemical here, this very blue substance called Benedict's reagent. And Benedict's reagent um, or salt a solution is really useful for looking at, at sugars in foods. But what you have to do is you have to first of all open up the dropper to get your sample. So here's the sample I prepared earlier. Okay, and you add quite a bit of it into it so it's blue. So there we go. All right. But for this for this um, test to work, you actually have to use um, hot water. And the best way to do that is using a uh, Bunsen burner and a water bath. And it needs to be around about 80 to 90 degrees. So it has to be quite hot. So use a thermometer. Obviously be very careful when using the Bunsen burner. And what you do is you very simply just place the sample carefully into the beaker and you leave it for approximately a minute. Okay, after a minute, you come and check your sample. Um, and as you can see, the sample has gone a brick red or orange color. And that signifies a positive uh, test for sugar. That shows that the biscuit contains lots of sugar. Okay, so that concludes all the four food tests that you have to do for the required practical activity.